Welcome to Proven and Probable. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Today we're highlighting a Canadian company that is one of the rare pure silver plays, boasting a 44 million ounce indicator resource at 300 grams per ton. Before we begin, I wanna personally invite you to join us. All you have to do is click the subscribe button and make sure you click the bell so you stay up to date on all of our interviews. Now, let's get started. Joining us for a conversation is Sean Kunkun, the CEO of Dolly Varden Silver Corp. Mr. Kunkun, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for having me, Maurice. <laughs> Glad to have you on the program to share the opportunity before us in Dolly Varden, which is focused on new discoveries in a historic mining camp. Sir, before we begin, please provide us with an overview of Dolly Varden Silver Corp and the unique value proposition the company presents to the market. Okay, th thanks, Maurice. And again, thank you so much for uh, this opportunity to share this exciting story with you and with your subscribers. Um, I think what makes Dolly Varden a very rare opportunity amongst a very rare, uh, small group of companies is that, um, first of all, there's, there's very few pure silver companies that are out there, um, you know, in, in a landscape that represents thousands of mining companies. Um, there's only a handful of pure silver projects. And what makes Dolly very rare amongst a very small group of companies is the fact that our project is located um, outside of the camp. It's located outside of uh, Chile, Argentina, Mexico, and Peru, where uh, which uh, the bulk of the world's silver comes from, especially the, the pure place. And so having a high-grade opportunity in a safe jurisdiction like Canada um, makes it quite unique and, and quite special. So when I think of Dolly Varden, I think of pure silver, and I think of uh, uh, the Golden Triangle and a safe jurisdiction. You know, you and I were talking about, uh, before the interview, you and I were discussing the those that stack silver, how the, and you and I both love stacking silver ourselves, but uh, for those that are at the what we would consider the introductory level, you're, you're stacking bullion. But what I would consider taking to the intermediate level and expert level is when you find a company that is a pure silver play as we have before us here in Dolly Varden. And that's why I'm so delighted to have you here and to truly appreciate the opportunity before us. I believe it's paramount to understand the genesis of Dolly Varden. Uh, Mr. Kun Kun, please share with us the impressive mining history that made Dolly Varden one of the most iconic names in mining. A great, great question. So important to, to know where it's come from, and, and, and that's really going to tell us where we're headed here. So uh, silver was discovered uh, on the property back in 1909, and uh, the Dolly Varden silver mine uh, began production in 1919. And so the Dolly Varden silver mine produced for, for two years. Um, it produced at very, very exceptional grades of 1,100 gram per ton silver. Um, and uh, there was a series of uh, other deposits, other mines that were identified um, in, in some following years, including uh, the Torbert mine. So in, in and around 1949, the Torbert mine made its way into production. And from 1949 to 1959, the mine produced um, about 18 million ounces of silver at 466 grams per ton. And um, there was uh, two other mines at the time that were identified, um, uh, the North Star and the Wolf. So historically, uh, there is four mines, two of them uh, um, giving meaningful production. Um, and uh, that's, that's really what, we're, we're, what we've inherited today. Uh, back in 1959, the silver price was 85 cents an ounce. And uh, so mining operations, they just weren't profitable at that price at that time. And so much of the deposit was left intact. And, um, and so there's been a, a series of, uh, of uh, aggressive drill campaigns in recent years that have, uh, have drilled out a compliant resource that we can get into a little bit later in this call. But, uh, you know, a strong, rich history. Um, you know, at, at that time under the British Empire, it was uh, the Dolly mine was uh, the, the richest uh, silver mine in the British Empire um, back in the 1950s. Um, it was uh, Canada's third richest silver mine. So it's got a long, rich, storied history. And, um, and, and if, you, if you zoom out from the project and you look at the area as a whole, uh, we're talking about Canada's uh, Northwest BC's Golden Triangle. 
Um, and if you go north, set in uh, the same type of rocks, um, you've got a very, very famous, uh, what started as a silver mine, which then evolved into becoming a gold mine, which was SK Creek. Uh, Maurice, 200 million ounces of silver um, at around 2,200 grams per ton. And there's a lot of similarities um, between the two projects. And um, so we are, we are in an area that um, has, per, has, has got about a billion ounces of silver in the ground. And so it's a very rich area. It's, it's, the, it's the type of area um, you, you want to be looking for new big discoveries. So, um, yeah, rich, rich storied history, not only on our property, but uh, the area at large. Yeah, I'm hearing location, 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 and we're also going to get into something equally as important to the location, and that is the management. Uh, now that we understand the historical accomplishments of Dolly Varden, get us up to date on the successes in the recent years that the market speculators are basically optimistic about on the upside potential before us. Well, you know what's, what's really interesting is despite about a 100-year history of exploration and mining activities on the property, it's not uncommon for um, the company to put out a new discovery that is just quite tremendous from a thickness perspective and from a grade perspective. Um, some of the numbers that come to mind, um, you know, in the, in the neighborhood of about 60 meters thickness, right, which is amenable to bulk mining methods and grades of, you know, four or 500 grams per ton. So if you look at um, years 2017, 18, 19, there was about 55,000 meters of drilling, which produced a new compliant resource estimate. And so what we've done is we've taken these uh, rich historic mines and we've uh, brought them into a modern resource. And these, these resource estimates with, um, with the criteria you need to meet in terms of uh, spacing of drill holes, um, it, they're, uh, they're, they're, there's a strict criteria. And the fact that the bulk of our ounces, Maurice, are in the indicated category just shows the confidence we have when we talk about our 44 million ounce resource estimate at 300 grams per ton. Um, so the way I look at where we are and, and where we're headed is we've, we're, we're, we're anchored um, with this cornerstone uh, 44 million ounce resource estimate, but really the, the real story here is the potential to potentially double or triple that resource and for this to be truly one of the great uh, silver mines, uh, not only in the Golden Triangle, but in the world. Let's get some boots on the ground. Mr. Kun Kun, take us to the Golden Triangle of BC and introduce us to your flagship Dolly Varden Silver Project. Okay, so if we, um, if, again, you know, speaking to the Golden Triangle, if we, if we zoom in to uh, the project, Maurice, um, you know, we're, we're sandwiched in between uh, Fury Gold Mines and, and Hecla. And what's, what's interesting about that is Hecla, uh, which has been producing precious metals for over 100 years and are, are expert underground miners, um, not only do they own a very, very large block of ground to the, uh, to the east of the property, but they're also shareholders. So they're a plus 10% shareholder. They've invested over two and a half million dollars into Dolly Varden this year. And so we're, we're, Dolly Varden is sandwiched with our 44 million ounce uh, silver resource in between Fury Gold Mines Homestake Ridge Deposit, which is a uh, million ounces of gold, 18 million ounces of silver. And then Heckless got a very, very impressive discovery um, on what's known as the Eliabs trend. So um, if, you, if you look at terms of infrastructure, um, there's a road that takes us from the Dolly Varden property down to, uh, to Alice Arm. Um, and that's a, uh, an ocean port where uh, we bring in our, our heavy, heavy equipment and uh, we barge up drill rigs. And then there's roads and there's power lines that take us to towns like uh, Terrace. Um, so tremendous infrastructure, uh, tremendous endowment, and it's truly a region uh, that's emerging. Um, and it's, it's quite unique because, you know, you've had some really big news in the triangle of late. Uh, you know, just this week, uh, Ascot, uh, which is just to the north of us, just announced a, uh, uh, they've got their project financing to take the premier mine uh, back into production. So there's some exciting things that are happening that are really validating 
um, investors interest in the area. Um, you know, we've got some of the largest mining companies in the world, including uh, Newcrest and Newmont, that have made big, big investments into the Golden Triangle. And so, like you said earlier, it's it's location, it's infrastructure, it's the regional opportunity um, that we have zooming into the specific part of the Golden Triangle. And again, what makes it so unique, though, is the nature of the deposit. It's it's highly uncommon to have such a pure high-grade silver play. Uh, most of our peers are reporting silver equivalents. And if you really look into their, their numbers, um, it's, it's a lead deposit, it's a zinc deposit, and um, you know half of the, the, the equivalent is coming from base metals. And what we have that makes us truly unique is it's a, we don't report equivalents. Uh, we we report the the pure silver numbers, and it's really a it's it's a silver project. Um, you know, very little byproduct, um, and just exceptional in its uh, in its thickness and its grade. You got me uh, giggling here because I'm I'm thinking back to the nomenclatures of those said companies. They tend to have silver in them, but they're not a a pure silver play or <laughs> really a silver play at all. <laughs> and what's interesting as well, and, and uh, our listeners should note this, is that you heard about the infrastructure. Now consider the expenditures for the capital expenditures that will not have to be used here because everything is really in place. All right, sir. Exploration is a research and development exercise. I'm interested in hearing how Dolly Varden arrived at their thesis, which has given the company confidence that the upside making additional discoveries and increasing shareholder value is just around the corner. Please walk us through the genetic model and then the exploration model. Okay. So uh, we're blessed by having um, some, some of the smartest scientists um, involved with the project. And so this is a group of exploration geologists and engineers that understand the tricky nuances of the Golden Triangle. Uh, the Golden Triangle is uh, a very, very well endowed uh, part of the world was you know, producing and hosting some of the highest grade deposits in the world. But with all the faulting and folding, it can make for a very, very uh, uh, tricky place to, to build up tonnage. And based on our team and the fact that they've had experience on almost every major mine in the area, um, they, they, they bring that experience. And, they, and, and really, this is a, this, you've got two types of, um, of mineralization uh, occurring on the property. We have a, a VMS-style mineralization, which is uh, where you've got these very, very uh, high-grade, high uh, wide um, intercepts and deposits like, like the Torbert mine. And then what makes it uh, really special is we've got this epithermal overprint that's occurring. Um, you know, Maurice, to, to keep it very high level, I'll just say that structure is everything. And so structural, uh, you know, structural studies like, like LIDAR has been um, very useful in identifying structure, especially on a property that has a lot of tree cover. And, um, and also understanding the, the, the sodium, uh, the potassium relationships um, and, uh, and understanding how that impacts uh, the alteration we're seeing in the field. And so we've identified what I, a, a, a term that I've coined the silver highway, where we've got a trend that starts at the old Dolly Varden mine and runs right up to the, the chance discovery that stretches for about five kilometers. And we've got about two dozen showings, past producing mines, new discoveries that we're following up on this silver highway. I think in tw uh, since 2017, correct me if I'm wrong, you've drilled about 174 holes. Is that correct? In about 55,000 uh, meters? So that represents drilling that occurred in uh, 2017, 18, and 19. What can you share with us about the assay results that uh, Dolly Varden has received since then? Okay, so um, like looking at specifically at the 2020 campaign where we drilled 40 holes and we've reported 11 assays from those 40 holes, um, you know, the big highlight or the success so far of this drill campaign has been um, some methodical 25 and 50 meter step outs at the Torbert mine. So when we started the drill program, the idea was to see if Torbert um, was going to extend and not only extend in terms of along strike and the opportunities along strike and at depth, but also looking at 
um, high grade mineralization within the block model and extending the high grade and, and adding ounces by extending high grade pockets, uh, really focusing on the kilo grades. And so um, in terms of both um, goals that we set out at Torbert, we, it was, uh, we accomplished both of them on an October 7th press release where we, um, we headlined over 300 grams, uh, over 12 meters on, on brand new step outs. And then within the mine, we were hitting uh, 300 grams over 30 meters. And within that, some very, very uh, high grade intercepts. So, um, you know, this, this project just keeps delivering. Um, it, we, we keep adding and we keep stepping out. And the bulk of the holes that were yet to report, the, the, the remaining 29 holes, um, half of those are focused on exploration targets. And then um, the other half are going back with strategic step outs again around the Torbert mine. Sorry for the eruption, folks, but I do want to remind you everything we've covered in today's interview you can find in the description box below and we count on your support be sure to share today's conversation with your family and friends now back to the interview what type of activity is actively being conducted on your projects at the moment so um what we've done is we just uh finished uh, cutting the last of the core and logging the last of the core and getting uh, that out to the assay labs so right now um we are going to take all the drill data that comes in and we will we will drop that into and, and marry it with all the historic work that was done in previous years and then come up with uh, targets and the plans for the uh, 2021 campaign and I should say um, you know some of those plans are, are, are going to uh, include um, more than just exploration now before we leave the project site, fill us in on the latest round of financing which was conducted uh, successfully back in November and then the company's acquisition of strategic surface rights. Okay. Yeah, this has been a very busy year on the financing front. Um, the company raised about 27 million dollars in total in 2020, um, which is quite exceptional considering that in February uh, when I took over the company as the new CEO, the market cap in total equated to 20 million. So it's it's been a very busy time. Um, you know, the, the, it, we've we've staircased the sign financing prices. So you know, we started the year with a 30 cent financing, then a 45, a 71, and the last financing we conducted was at a dollar a share, where we raised uh, seven million dollars. And um, in terms of uh, in terms of the the new land deal that we announced um, just within the last week, um, what we've done there, Maurice, is uh, for years. The, the company was leasing uh, all the land that housed the Dolly Varden camp, uh, the Dolly Varden buildings, the, all the core storage, um, in, including uh, waterfront access to where the barge would deliver the equipment that's used uh, on site. And so, you know, I thought, you know, as, as, I, as I look forward to development and, and future uh, development opportunities and mining operations coming back to the Dolly Varden project, I want, really wanted to control our own destiny. So the company has purchased all of the land uh, that house uh, all of our buildings. Um, so we've got, we've got the lands, we've got the surface rights, and, and strategically, we also have access to the port. Um, and, and really, I think this is strategic not only for Dolly Varden, but for the area at large. Um, so it, I'm, I'm happy to say that we now control our own destiny, destiny in terms of future development. All right, let's leave the project site and discuss some important topics germane to the projects. Uh, do any of the projects have any earning options? No, we, uh, we have 100% interest. What is your relationship with the First Nations? Um, so... We are part of an organization called the BC Regional Mining Alliance. Um, uh, this is a collaboration between government, uh, between the First Nations, and between companies. So there's four companies that participate in this, um, uh, GT Gold, Ascot, Skeena, and Dolly Varden. And so beyond having um, a partnership where the First Nations, the company, and government goes out to talk to investors and let investors know that BC is open for business, 
Um, the Golden Triangle has got a long history of mining. We, we, we want development with all three partners. The government's there. Um, people like Peter Robb are there explaining the permitting process, explaining how the government was key in bringing uh, infrastructure in. Um, and, uh, and then the First Nations partners are, are pro-business. Um, you know, we at Dolly Varden specifically uh, we employ a third of our workforce is from the Nass Valley. Uh, they are the Nishka people. And, uh, and Maurice, like, this is not like, this isn't lip service. Like these are our brothers and our sisters. Um, we, these are our friends. Um, you know, we, you know, we're, I'm, I, I live here in, in British Columbia. So this is, this is an extension of my community. And um, the people, the people that work on our site, you know, they they do exactly what you and I do. They, you know, they they, co they coach basketball or soccer. Um, they have really positive impacts in the local communities. And and longer term, what's what's really pushing and motivating the team at Dolly Varden is we want to bring good, strong jobs to the area. And uh, we really believe that this is going to be a win-win for, it's going to be a win for the province, it's going to be a win for the company and our shareholders, it's going to be a win for the local communities, uh, not just the First Nations, but also um, the local communities um, in, in Stewart and all the contractors that support the communities and all the businesses that support those contractors. So, um, I'm, you know, I'm really excited about the opportunity of, uh, of of all the wealth we can bring to the area, and I really I really know it'll be a win for for all parties. That is so encouraging to hear because this relationship is paramount to success. If you don't have it, nothing moves forward. And all too often, I think we sometimes just look at numbers, and you have to look at the human aspect of it. And I'm glad that you take it so serious and have forged that relationship. And looks like it's going to be one going uh, for a long time coming. Let me ask I, you this, sir. I got to say. Just to add to that, um, I can't take all the credit. Uh, we've got um, a very, uh, a very strong director on the board uh, that came when I took came on with Dolly in February. Um, my friend and my colleague Rob McLeod came on, and Rob um, is a third generation miner from Stewart, and um, I, uh, I've really learned a lot in terms of. Uh, in terms of uh, you know running a junior mining company from uh, Rob and I've just got to pay uh, you know credit for him um, you know when we first got into the throes of, of this year and you know we were faced with some challenges that uh, none of us have seen before including a, a global pandemic um, you know we sat down with our First Nations partners and we said look, you know we said look we need to come up with a plan here to ensure that we're safe that your communities are safe and we really worked with um, an organization. Um, the Anishka Employment Skills and Training Organization uh, to develop protocols around that, and um, and I, I don't think I could have done that without people on my board like Rob and and other parts of our management team. Oh, that's great to hear. Great to hear. All right, sir, are you fully permitted? Um, so we're we're at the exploration stage right now. So we're we're not mining. So we're not permitted for mining today, but we are uh, fully permitted for all the exploration activities we're carrying out. Yes, sir. Is the ultimate goal for Dolly Varden to build a mine or arbitrage? That's a, that's a really good question. Um, I, I think what the way I'd like to answer that is I've I've built a mine before. I've you know taken a company from inception into production. Um, you know, raising half a billion dollars along the way. Um, I, I I know how to go through that exercise and. I think the way I'd like to answer that, Maurice, is at every step, every day, every week, um, we have to ask ourselves, you know, what's best for the shareholders. And if we find ourselves in a situation where um, another company wants to come in and they want to build and they want to develop and it's an accretive deal for our shareholders, we will do that deal. Um, until then, we will continue to grow inventory, de-risk the project and move towards a mining decision. We've discussed the good. Let's address the bad. What can go wrong, and what are your action plans to mitigate that wrong? Hey, good, good question. Um, like, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Like, so this year weather was horrendous. Um, you know, it went wrong, and um, you know, our team was, you know, just just did a phenomenal job of 
looking for the pockets of weather to be able to get out into the field. And I think the, um, the, the you know, one of the things that I'm going to look at is when all the companies report their year end results in, in, in April, um, and we look at a drill cost per meter in the area, I think Dolly Varden um, numbers are going to stand up really, really strong. And it's because we've got um, individuals involved with the company that are incentivized and aligned with shareholders. Uh, they're not just contractors. So when a lot of our peers uh, were, were taking a weather day, our team was looking for the opportunity to get into the field. So, you know, things, things, you know, things in business, things in mining go wrong. And it's having uh, a team in place that is aligned with shareholders to um, make the best out of all scenarios and situations. Switching gears, let's discuss the people responsible for increasing shareholder value. Mr. Kunkun, please introduce us to your board of directors. Okay, so I've got a, um, a very strong board. Um, this is a board that has uh, got uh, individuals who've held uh, some of the most senior positions at companies like Hecla, like Coor Mining, some of the most famous you know, silver companies in the world. Um, you know, we've got exploration geologists that worked for Anglo. We have, um, we've got lawyers, accountants. Um, we've, we've got uh, a, a team that has a skill set in incubating a small market cap company, having the ability to promote, to finance, and to execute, and then to uh, sell or to merge the company with a larger entity. Um, and, and this group has brought a lot of um, value to shareholders in the past and a lot of M&A transactions so we've got we've got a very we've got a very high functioning board, and it's uh, a very involved board, and um, yeah, just a, and it's 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 well rounded and it's it's a diverse group, of, you know, season and it's a, it's a, it's it, we've actually got some great chemistry, um, which is important, and and at the end of the day, we also have a lot of fun. Um, That's you know, important. We, it is very important. <laughs> You know, on the management side, um, you know, when, when COVID hit, what we started doing uh, daily was was uh, working out together virtually. So uh, every day at one fifteen, we get together uh, um, via one of the uh, virtual platforms, and we we do some we do some uh, exercise together for forty five minutes. And it's it's team building, but it's it's a group that you know you want to come to work, you want to laugh, you want to work hard, you want to have success. And I think if you do that, it doesn't really feel like work. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better. All right, sir. Who is Sean Kunkun and what makes him qualified for the task at hand? So, so Sean Kunkun is a, is a husband, is a father, a uh, soccer coach. Um, I've, uh, in terms of being qualified for the task at hand, I've spent the last 17 years in the junior mining business. Um, helping companies grow, helping companies bring awareness and uh, getting the, the, the financial dollars to unlock the value of the opportunities. And uh, I've got a team of, uh, of explorationists, um, you know, mining engineers uh, and, uh, and brilliant scientists that are, are uh, motivated and incentivized to help me bring the best value to our shareholders. Let's get into some numbers. Please provide us with the capital structure for Dolly Varden. Okay, Maurice. Um, so we have 130 million shares issued and outstanding. Um, we've got uh, Eric, Eric Sprott at roughly uh, 19% interest, uh, uh, Hecla at around 10%, and then we've got institutions that own another 50%. So if you take in management stake in the company, about 85% of the company is held by uh, a group that's aligned, that's long term, that's uh, astute precious metals investors. Uh, so a very, very small float. And uh, we've got about a $100 million market cap today. Um, the company has $25 million in cash. And uh, we're, we're well positioned for, and uh, in a position that where we don't need to finance for, um, for at, at least this season and potentially the following. How much debt do you have? Uh, there's no debt. And what is your burn rate? Um, it fluctuates as an exploration company. It, it varies. Um, 
but we, we spent about uh, we spent about six million dollars this year. Um, all all in all, about five point two million of that was in the field. Are there any redundant assets on the books that we should know about? No. All right. Are there any change of control fees? If yes, what is the compensation? Uh, in terms of management change of control? Yes, sir. Um, there's only one change of control. And, you know, for a $100 million company, I think the total change of control cost is uh, under $500,000. Is management charging a consultant fee for any services? No. In closing, multi-layered question. What is the next unanswered question for Dolly Varden? When can we expect a response and what determines success? Okay, so um, the, the catalysts going forward are uh, drill results. And those drill results are going to tell us um, a lot about uh, going forward at the Torbert mine, um, whether the company will make a decision to go underground and do some underground drilling. And, uh, you know, success for us is growing ounces uh, organically through exploration uh, with a low discovery cost. And uh, success for us is adding ounces to inventory uh, also through acquisition, as long as it's accretive to our shareholders in the company. Sir, what keeps you up at night that we don't know about? Um, what keeps me up at night? Uh, Besides COVID, I think that's everyone's standard answer. <laughs> that's a cop out there. <laughs> Um, what keeps me up at night? Um, it's it's different for different times of the year, Maurice. It just depends what's on deck. Um, I just you know what what kept me up through the summer was any any time we were in the field. Um, I just want to make sure everybody's safe, and so I it's a sigh of relief. Um, you know we had no major incidents to report this year, uh, so that's one thing that keeps me up at night um, is the safety of our staff. And apart from that, um, you know, because we're in a strong financial position, that's not keeping me up at night. Um, you know, we've got a healthy balance sheet. There's no debt to service. Um, so, you know, just, you know, just the health and, and well-being of the people around me. Last question, sir. What did I forget to ask? Um, potentially maybe what differentiates, uh, and I think maybe we covered this on, on the first question, but... Um, you know, I, I really, I, I just really want to emphasize how unique this company is from the perspective of being a pure silver company situated where it is. And I just, just want to just highlight that point. Mr. Kun Kun, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Wishing you and Dolly Varden the absolute best, sir. Thank you so much, Maurice, for the opportunity. All the best to you, sir. You too. Dolly Varden trades on the TSXV symbol DV and on the OTC symbol D-O-L-L-F. Before you make your next bullion purchase, make sure you call me. I'm a licensed representative to buy and sell physical precious metals delivered directly to your home in the form of gold, silver, platinum, palladium, and rhodium to offshore depositories and precious metal IRAs. Give me a call at 8 five 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 zero five nineteen hundred that number again is eight five 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 zero five nineteen hundred or you may email maurice at milesfranklin.com finally please subscribe to proven and probable for mining insights and bullion sales subscription is free the information presented on proven and probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.